Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Yeah, you guys can hear me before microphone, right? Yeah. Okay, so maybe no microphone. So there's at least a bit more energy here, right? Okay, so I know it's after lunch, so it's going to be tough to get everyone to be passionate, but I think happy to be here. Great to see a big audience, and great to be back at Magic again. So I'm Siti, uh, Chen Chao from Faith. Okay, so I need to use microphone. So I'll try my best to, to project as well. Okay. So I think let me share a bit on our journey, like where we are, where we were, and how do we get from. So back in 2007, Joel and Kylie started at Youth Asia. So that's where the little bungalow in Bukit Gasing. And then from there, in 2010, they launched Group Small that was eventually sold to Groupon. So that was where the first phase of the journey, at the time I haven't joined them, but that was the first phase where it was built upon eight people and building up in exciting. And it was sold, groups, one fun fact was that Group Small was sold to Groupon while hiking at Bukit Gasing. So it was a very interesting, instead of Joe pitching them in the Koh Thai presentation, he brought them hiking and convinced them while doing the hike. So fast forward from there, in tw phase two of it is 2011, from there, we built up Groupon Malaysia. That's when I joined. And then from there, we got a chance to do a few turnarounds. So we went to Taiwan and did a turnaround. When we went there, the business was losing a million dollars a month. And in six months, we turned into profitable. And from there, we got a chance to work on Southeast Asia, India, Japan, Korea, and eventually went on Asia. So at the early 2015, at that time, we were managing 3,000 employees, 1.6 billion US dollar sales a year, 12 countries, 50 offices. And we thought that, hey, Maybe it's time to be YOLO. And we said that we quit and let's come and build our own. So that was when KFIT launched. I know KFIT and me doesn't jive. I'm more KFAT. <laughs> right? But I, I think Joe was like, hey, why you get someone that's so fat to do a KFIT? But we went on it. We were a bit overzealous, so we launched eight countries. So in the five months, we launched multiple countries. And one year down the road, we actually had to shut down in four countries. So we failed in Korea. Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand. Painful lessons, lost a few million dollars, US dollars, and we had to pull back. And I still remember, went to Korea and on a flight to there, and I still remember the 19 bow to the team there. We had 19 people in the team, look at each of them at the eyes and bow to them and say, I'm sorry, I failed. Right? So we failed there, and we had to take the losses to move forward from there. So that moved on to the fourth phase of us, where we went on acquisition. So we went to acquire Groupon Indonesia, and then after that, Malaysia, and after that, Singapore. And during that period as well, we basically integrate, merge, migrate, all process, all tools, everything, from Groupon processors, tools, to faith, for merchant, consumer. It was pretty crazy. So over a very short period of time, we had to cross millions of consumers, and we had to retrain about at that time, 100,000 waiter waitresses and business owners and finance operations people. So the whole process was nine months for the three countries and crossing it, all three different platforms. And from there, we went on the, this current phase. So this phase started in May 2017, last year. So Faith as a standalone brand. And then from there, we launched, soft launch Faith Pay last year, July. So it's about one year ago. And by end of the year, Faith Pay was in seven cities and in February this year, Faith Pay became more than half of a Malaysia business for us. And last month, Faith Pay became more than half of Faith Group sales. So that was an interesting fact that this business that was started one year ago is bigger than the deal business that started in 2010. And I think that was uh, one phase and it, we will continue to see the fast growth on the Faith Pay side to basically drive it. But of course, some people will say, what is Faith Pay? So one fun fact is Faith Pay is not a payment option. It's not a payment, right? We are not an e-wallet. We are not a payment. We are a rewards loyalty platform. So for Faith Pay is when you pay. So what's the difference between Faith Pay and other e-wallets is that one, in Faith Pay you cannot reload. Whereas every other wallets you need to reload. You can or you need, depending on how you look at it, right? Whether it's a good thing or as a inconvenience, right? So I think that's one bigger fact. So I think tak ya, tak, tak perlu reload, right? So that's one fun fact for Faith Pay. And we believe that Malaysians don't like to do reload. People like to just transact straight rather than each time put money and store inside. 
So that's phase one. And the number two is that cashback. For faith pay, every place have a cashback. So we decided that we work with merchants to sponsor cashback for every single place or 99 point plus percent places, right? And decided that we were going on that phase where make sure that every place has a cashback. So when you use FaithPay, you got a cashback, except for very, very few places that we are working on. Whereas most other e-wallets decided that they are going, not going to ask merchant, they, most of them have billions of dollars, hundreds of million dollars in their bank, so they are going to sponsor the cashback. And then they're going to choose places and they're going to subsidize the cashback. So we decided that it's not sustainable and being a small player, we don't have that cash to play that game. So we don't want to do that. So we go and convince merchant. And third is that because we convince merchant to pay for the cashback, the cashback is only valid at that same place. That same outlet or same brand or same chain. Versus the cashback works for every place. And from a business perspective, why we have to do that is because eventually, one of the key factors that control this success failure will be the waiter, waitresses, the cashier, the outlet owner and they would prefer the cashback back to the same outlet than everywhere else. So I think that was one consideration. And we believe the consumer, every three months or so, will go back to the same place. And I think that built loyalty. Because back then, Groupon people say that Groupon bring new customers, but not retained customer. So now we have, for the business perspective, there's a deals business that bring new customers, and we have faith pay that bring repeat loyal customers. So I think that was the other aspects of it. Yeah, so I think among investors, we have a few investors. So Sequoia Capital is our main investor so far. So Sequoia Capital may not be known to most people, but Sequoia Capital, they are in every phone here. They are the early investor for Apple, Google, WhatsApp, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, PayPal, and in this part of the world, Gojek, Traveloka, Tokopedia, Carousel, etc. And we are still the only Malaysian company invested by Sequoia as of today in their 45 years or so history. So I think pretty interesting building out. And, and a lot of times, good news is that as we build with them, they have done big deals with that. And no matter how we do, they will tell us, okay, what's that actually do a lot better than you? They do this, or YouTube is doing a lot, way, way better than you. So I think that gives us a lot of learning from the world best. And of course, we have a bunch of other investors that have been supporting us. And I think for Faith, as an overall, what we look at from the merchant standpoint is as a whole cycle, like from a merchant standpoint, how do we people discover the business? So today, what we look at is today, Starbucks can do their own loyalty or the whole suite on their own. Or those today, Starbucks actually let us do it for them in Johor. But as a overall, if you look at the business, so today run a cafe, right? How do you get people to aware of the cafe? How do you know, know about it? How do people know it when they are around your place? And how do you know the quality of your place? So I think that's where the first few parts there, discovery, geotargeting, and rating review. And after that, how do you bring new customers for them? That's where the deals, gift things, and stuff come in. And after that, coming in on, how do you help them to retain the customer? That's where the faith pay and digital stamp card. It's like, many people may not want to keep the stamp card, right? A lot of times, like places, coffee place give you a stamp card, that paper form, and then stamp. A lot of people lose it. Today, we can turn that on for any businesses in three minutes. Any cafes, any retail that want to do a stamp card, they just tell us how many stamps, which stamp give what, we will turn it on. And that's something that makes it super simple for any businesses to do. Anyone want to do a cashback to a customer, back to the, their cashback to be spent on their place, we can turn it on in three minutes. So the goal is to make it super simple for most businesses that don't have a big team, like maybe Starbucks, to build their own loyalty. And then on top, definitely data. And I think under data-wise is, how do you help them to know about their customers more than uh, they themselves can know? Right? And then I think that's where the insights, how their restaurants compare to other places. How do we know that this customer is the first time or repeat customers and stuff? And this is our overall ecosystem. How do you build the earning and burning? That means spending and earning rewards and coming back. And I think that's building up multiple categories as you extend and getting multiple reward points as you build on it. And then below here is the blockchain. So I think we have been testing private network as well. And to see, we haven't launched it. And for now, no immediate intention to launch it, but it's building up and testing and see where we can get towards. And I think looking back, back then was that, do people remember this, right? Good old days, we, we cut the vouchers. And then after that, people keep all these loyalty cards, right? Back then, all the big brands would launch their own physical cards. And then after that, people had the wallet has all those cards and everything stay inside. And all the coins, right? And I think the way we look at it is that, how can we really propel all this, right? To build a cashless society. I think India gone through that. China definitely gone through that. And how can we build, build that, right? So I was in Hangzhou a few months ago, 
And a taxi driver at that time, like, I went on it and I paid him cash. And then he looked at me as I, I'm out from outer space, right? So he's a 60-year-old man. He told me that he hasn't touched cash for three months. And I'm the first guy that gave him cash, right? And if you start meeting people from China, they actually don't have cash with them at all. And I think that's where, how do we go on it? And I think we internally we are trying as well. Our Malaysia GM has gone cashless for two months. He hasn't used a dollar. And I think is how do we, like right now when I go to Jakarta or Singapore, actually most of the time don't even bring any foreign currency already. We'll go fully cashless. So I think is how do we be able to get to that point where we can go fully cashless and basically make all the convenience true, right? So cashless future, how can we build that? Is it easy? No, but I think eventually is how can all the players in the market come together and build that future, right? And I think it's how do we put everything together? Vouchers, loyalty cards, payment, wallets, everything into one app that you can do it. And I think so far, more than 30,000 vouchers are available on our app already. It's more than 6,000 loyalty cards. More than 12,000 12, restaurant retailers have gone in. More than a million rating and reviews so that you know which place. Like some people think that rating is important, right? I will go to a place that is 4.8 rating. For some people, cheaper is better. And for us, we're not there to try to make a choice, but we decided that put it out there for consumers to choose. If between, a, let's say, a massage, places, place A, 68 ringgit, 4.8. Place B, 38 ringgit, 3.8. Which one do you prefer? Right? So I think it's turn the choice back to consumer. And also by doing this, this back then Groupon, a lot of time, consumer would tell us that, hey, uh, businesses would treat Groupon customers as second-class citizens. Right? Second-class customers. But what we want to do is by now consumer, after every transaction, you have the power to rate them. Today, businesses have to treat customer well or else their rating will go down and they will not be able to sell to other customers. So now turn the power back to consumer to decide the fate of their businesses. If they treat you badly, give them a bad rating, their ranking will go down. And I think other customers will not go back there. So I think turn that power around. So I think that's what we're building on at this marketplace. How do we go on that? and building a cashless society. And I think the key, one, one more point that we have is now you can earn and spend Asia points on faith. So you can plug in one time, and every time you spend on faith, you get Asia points, and of course, you can redeem it for your flight, right? So 500 points today is worth one free flight on Asia promotion, which means that if you go to Hong Kong Hotpot, spend 500 ringgit, you get one free flight to Penang, right? So during the Asia promotion day. So I think the goal is to make it simple for people to spend. And to redeem the points is within one second, just one toggle or button. And I think the goal part is right, right now we have built over the last one, year, one and a half years. So right now the business is more than 100 million US dollar sales. So long way to go. I know in China people talk about trillion, not about million. So we are still far from where China is. But I think for a one year plus journey, it's been pretty exciting building and every month double-digit growth and seeing how far we can get towards there. And I think keep on building on more locations, more sessions, and more places. And Faith Pay, the last one year has seen more than 100x growth. And it's an exciting journey, a lot of trial and error, a lot of big businesses that have helped us. Let's say when we first started Faith Pay, Yao Yao worked with us a lot and helped us a lot in that journey. As we try the stamp card, Redbox, Barcook, Kyochon, play a big part to help us on that. And I think multiple businesses work with us to fine-tune and get it right. So we don't know enough, but I think we go in. Let's say retail, Sicily work with us a lot to help us to get it right on retail. So I think a lot of it is working with the business partners and solve their problem. And I think in every startup journey, that's key. And so far, some of these brands that came in, Nam Hyung is the one interesting one. Since last month, middle of last month, Nam Hyung has taken away the credit card terminal. So that's the first major businesses that remove the credit card terminal. Today, you go to Nam Hyung, you cannot pay using credit card terminal. No more. That means 100% either cash or faith pay. Of course, I hope that one day we'll go 100% faith pay. Right? So I think that's one important step for big businesses to do that. We have heard, I can't announce it, but quite a few businesses that have membership card, membership program, they are going to stop their membership program. And one of them is coming pretty soon. Many of you go to sing karaoke. I shall not name them but their membership will go into more fully into faith. And I think it's an in interesting journey where hopefully in the next few months, one year, you no longer need to carry loyalty card of all the businesses, but get all the same benefit or more benefits of those businesses. And it's just building one step at a time, one brand at a time. At Starbucks, we got Johor. Hopefully, we'll eventually be able to get through the nation.
Yeah, and I think in end is building a product that people love. I think in all entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs or current entrepreneurs, is building that. And it's not a perfect journey. And a lot of time is how do we one step at a time building that, right? How do you get customers to love that? I think like getting messages like a customer have gone cashless for one half weeks on all meals and everything means a lot to us. And I think it's how do we make it easier, cheaper, better, faster for our consumer to pay and from businesses, whether the cashier, whether for outlets, to receive the payments and get the rewards done, CRM done, and also get the payment reconciled and everything. So I think that's key part. And I think in the, I'll end on it. In the new world, it's not the big fish we eat the small fish, it's a fast fish which eats the slow fish. So I think that's where we are at. Okay, I'll quickly go through some of the questions. From China and four countries, how do they manage to get the funds to get a group of entities? I think one part of it is I think trust of investors. I think we were lucky to get about 20 investors that supported us. So I think Sakura Capital is one of those. Uh, SIG, which some of you may have heard of, Jinzu uh, Toutiao in China and TikTok. So they have funded that. We have in Malaysia, Asiata as our investor. Singapore side, a joint venture between Temasek and UOB. In Asia, we have Lipo Group in a fund of Ventura. We have the founder of Fitness First. We have the founder of Lazada Zalora. So a bunch of investors that supported us. So I think thanks to them and many other investors that make it possible. You mentioned Brad had $100 million of subsidized merchant give better. How are you going to compete in the long run? And I think we think that eventually the sensibility will come, right? Not everyone can. And I think one of the things that we do is also partnership. Today, you can pay using Boost inside Faith app. You open Faith app, you just choose payment option, Boost, you can pay using that. Today, you can go on Faith, open up, you can choose pay Asia points inside Faith app. So I think the goal is to plug all those in. Today, you go to Boost or Asia Big Pay or even go to Alipay. A number of those restaurants are actually from us. Go to Carousel, Singapore. Yeah, the restaurants from us, Tokopedia, the same thing. So I think it's building on a lot of partnership building on it and working with multiple players to get it through. How does Faith sh differ from shop back in the cashback? So sh cashback is all online, we are offline. And cashback is also cashback back to a common pool that you can spend across cash, uh, shop back. Ours is back to specific restaurants. But we do work quite a lot with Shopback as well. So we, we do have a lot of partnership with Shopback to drive that part as well. What are the thoughts on the country having so many mobile wallets? I think in the end is that eventually a few wallets will succeed. And our goal is that to be there working with all of those because we don't own a mobile wallet. We can't build a wallet because we will never win. We are too small to play that game. But I think being a small player, the goal is how do we work with them and drive that. So I think most of the key mobile wallets, we are working with them. Right? And I think for us, that's the goal to go in. Some of them, I can't tell exactly how it work, but I think almost all the mobile wallet players today, we have big one in the country, we are working something with them, whether already or going to. And I think that's where our, our play. That we, the pie is way bigger. How many of you in the last one week use any form of technology when you eat? Any form of technology? Right? And maybe there's 30% of the hand. In this room where it's super savvy, super intellectual, super tech, right? 30% of people use any form of technology. The pie is way out there. How many of you eat at least five times out a week? Right? A lot of you eat more than five times out a week. So the potential is way bigger. In China, this business is trillion. So the pie is bigger for everyone. The question is how many of us can create value and build it on it? Okay, so my friend who operates a restaurant say the settlement period for Faith is seven days versus one, three days for other wallets. So today, we do have daily settlements depend on the size of business and depend on the needs. So today, uh, maybe ask your friend to contact us, right? So there are businesses that we do daily. So I think it's basically, there's a certain threshold. And of course, one is, we need to put practical, the rest of the wallets have billions in their banks. They all have big businesses, we don't. And as a small player, as an entrepreneur, we have to see what we can do. But if... Cash is a play and it's a important for, for the businesses. We will find a way to work it through. I think that's to be very transparent on it, right? Being a startup, we may not be able to have the same resources as a big giant. Almost all our player competitors or partners or big players have billions in their bank. We don't. And being a small player, how do we play against that? How do we have all the local Malaysia technology? All our technology is built in Malaysia. How can we have a Malaysian technology fight against the global giants that succeeded in every part of the world? Can we succeed or can we not? And I think that's why we're building on it. And one step at a time and doing it. I think tough, but I think it's, it's a journey that is worth exciting building on it. Right? As we tell the team, we don't know whether we'll succeed, but we will fight till every drop. Right? I think with the team, 
day and night. And if a merchant tells us a problem at midnight, we, will, we are solving that at midnight. You can any, tell any of our staff, and we will work hard and connect and solve it. And that's what the, the goal is. Customer service response speed right now is 16 seconds. Not perfect. Not all responses is perfect yet, but I think today, after responses we survey, it's about 98% of customers that have to get a response that's thumb up or thumb down. 98% is thumb up now. Of course, there's still 2% to fix. Customer rating average is 4.65, which means that there's still 0.35 to get to. Right? One year ago was 3.8. It's still a long way. We track every day the customer rating and one place at a time. Every merchant that get multiple one and two ratings or below a certain threshold, they'll get warning. Right? Let's say in Malaysia, in our top 100 merchants, I think there are still about five of them ratings below four. So they do get warnings and we do work with them to try to solve it through. Right? Never get, because we don't own their stuff, we don't own their shop, but we will work with them. And your voting machine will be give them poor rating if they serve you badly. And give them great rating if they serve you well. And I think that's how we will kick in to solve that today. Okay, thank you very much. I know the time runs out. But all the best and I think to all of you building on it, uh, building on it and all the best.